Okay, so velocity triangles, all right? So velocity vectors, okay. So essentially velocity triangles, what velocity triangles are is they vectors, right? Velocity vectors are floating the blade at inlet, at its inlet and outlet. So ultimately, you could imagine we're dealing with different machinery, right? We're dealing with turbines, we're dealing with compressors, we're dealing with pumps. And each one of those devices has fan blades or they, they have blades which the fluid interacts with. So our, uh, our, our turbines, for example, like as you see here, this is a turbine blade, right? A turbine, like let's let's quickly get the, the whiteboard going and then I can explain the, the very, very basic idea because I want to go through this as quick as possible because we, we need to get into questions, right? So generally you have a shaft like this uh, and on the shaft is you have these different blades of different heights, all right? You have this bigger blade and a smaller blade, all right? You have a bigger blade and you have a smaller blade, all right? So a bigger blade and a smaller blade. And we've got a lot of these blades, right? As you saw with that first picture, all right? If you saw, as you saw with this image, if you look here, you've got a lot of, lot of, lot of different sections of the blades, right? Uh, the more blades, the more uh, the turbines in a turn with the fluid, if you're looking at a turbine, right? But the same for compressors, right? So yeah, so we got a turbine, uh, so, 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 so we have a turbine. So this is, I'm just gonna use a turbine for example. All right, this is a turbine. Let's excuse my, so this is a turbine, right? As, as we see here. And as you would imagine uh, with, with, uh, with a turbine or any form of a uh, turbine compressor, uh, there's fluid flowing, right? And the fluid flows through this turbine, right? flow through this turbine and then what we get is we get uh, let's this we, we get motion right we want this turbine to move that's the ultimate goal but this thing or oh, it's the same or oh, you can also call it omega right we got this thing turning we, we, we got omega but generally what uh, what like generally they give this to you as rpm Right, so this thing is in, this is RPM. So this thing's moving. Let me actually, we can just write it here. Can write RPM here. Okay. So we, this thing is, so we got Omega, all right? Now, what, what's going on here is we want to convert uh, this fluid into mechanical energy, right? And in order to do that is we need the fluid to hit some, some sort of blade so that the energy can be converted so that the hydraulic energy, right? So hydraulic energy can be converted into mechanical energy, right? And remember, so this is the opposite for, for compressors. But we're looking now just at the general example of turbines. Okay, so what, what we do is, is we, we take a mean radius analysis because we, we want to just take some section of this turbine and we want to see how much of this energy, this uh, fluid energy is going to be converted into mechanical energy of the of the turbine, right? So we take a mean radius generally, right? So we take what's known as the mean radius. And now what the mean radius is of this turbine, so this is Rm, right? And what the mean radius of this turbine is, it's the uh, it's the analysis. So, so we so we assume the flow to be constant throughout this turbine at, at all different sections. We assume it to be constant, but remember the blades are at different heights, and we don't want to have a different design for each specific blade, right? We want to generally have a, a standard format for each blade that we can just replicate and then just manufacture it and add it to each to to, to keep things simple. So that's why we have our mean radius because the blades are different heights and we just take a mean radius, an average radius uh, to analyze uh, the, the blade cross-section. So we take this blade cross-section over here and we, so we essentially cut it, right? And what's, what, what's going on here, let's really get another color, is this is our axial direction, right? This is the axial direction. So this is axial. This is our axial direction. You can write that down. And then this is going to be what's known as our circumferential direction 
or our y, di y direction. So it's obviously why this is our y direction, right? Like this is for this turbine that, that we see here. But now what we need to do is, is we need to cut a cross section through this turbine or through a turbine blade, right? And what's going on here is you have different blades. You have a rotor, right? So uh, no, let's say this is a stator, this is a turbine, right? So we have a stator, we have a stator, and then we have what's known as a rotor. Rotor, right? We have a stator, and we have a rotor. Okay. And the, the idea is this, uh, this, the stator directs, in it, directs the fluid onto the rotor, and the rotator rotates. So this is stationary, the stator is stationary, and the rotor is moving, right? That's what actually moves the turbine, is the rotor. So, yeah, so, so we cut through the, the turbines or the, the turbine blades, and then we get something, right, that, uh, okay, so wait, let's, so you're going to get something that looks like this, All right? You're going to have your stator, let's quickly move this, you're going to have what's known as your stator, and you're going to have what's known as your rotor. Right. So if we look at our, our, our velocity triangles the, the, in our notes, right, this is generally what we get here. This is what it looks like for all axial flow turbines and less stated otherwise. Right. This is so we have what's known as our stator or our nozzle. Right. So I even tell you here. So for our velocity triangles for axial flow turbines, we have our rotor, our impeller. So this becomes a rotor slash impeller before this. Yeah. So Let's quickly see. Wait, what, was I, what was I writing here? No, I think I wrote this incorrect. It must be stator, stator slash nozzle is before the rotor. Right? Before the rotor. And uh, yeah, we got our velocity triangles, right? So you, all you have to do is to draw your velocity triangles. And to remember to draw your velocity triangles, you have to know the shape. Uh, just you have to memorize the shape and then you just have to know that essentially our velocities are above uh, and our inlet and our outlet velocities which which one is above which so we've got absolute and relative but I'll, I'll explain that to you now okay so back to our our general diagram we had All right so one is our inlet one represents our inlet two represents our outlet u is our blade velocity C is our absolute velocity, W is our relative velocity, and then we've got our blade angles, right? But let me let me jump back here, and then we're going to see exactly what, what we mean by these terms. Okay, so this is, remember, this is, our, this is for an axial flow turbine that we're doing it for. So we have our, I don't know, we have our stator. So we have our stator, which is obviously stationary. All right, this is our stator. And then we have what's known as our, uh, uh, we have our stator, and then we have our rotor. All right, okay, just excuse my <laughs> my writing. I mean, as long as you can, you get the idea. We have stator and we have a rotor. So, you, uh, so, okay, so, so what we do is, is, We've, well, what we've done is we've, we've cut now this, uh, these blades, right? So we've taken these first two blades. These are the first two blades, right? Your stator and your rotor. And we've cut it at the mean radius. And we, and this is basically what it looks like through the cross section of the blade. This is a cross section of the blades, right? So this is a, wait, let's just get rid of that. Let's make this black. This is a cross section. Okay, so we cut it, we cut it. So this is basically what, this is a cross section. I'm doing some hatching. So this is a cross section. You don't have to draw this, uh, this hatching in your, like if they ask for velocity triangles, I'm just doing it to show you that, look, this thing's been cut. Okay. So, so you basically just have to memorize the layout of it. Right, this is it, it's set. This is how they've defined it. This is the industry standard for axial flow turbines. This is what it's going to look like. Okay. So, what we need to do is, is we need to, okay, so, so, 
So we, we need to look at this fluid, and we see that the fluid is coming in here, right, in the axial direction. Uh, and then the blades are turning. So the blades, so the, what the blade that's turning is our, wait, let's just quickly, another color. So the blade that's turning is, this is going at the speed of u, this is our rotor, right? This one remains stationary. And our u, this is going this way, this is our, uh, no, no, our, our, our blades are turning in this direction, right? They're spinning in this direction. But remember, we cut it at this, this is like at, at an RM. This is at a very specific point that's been cut in, in, uh, in, in place. So we assume that at that point, it's like a velocity vector of, of u, right? So basically what's going on here is here's our shaft. Yeah, here's our, our, our turbine blade, right? We've cut it. Now it's spinning here at this point when we, where we've cut it at RM. We've cut it. We're at a distance RM from it. Uh, and it's going at a speed of U at that tangential point. Obviously, it's rotating, but at that tangential point, it's going at U, and then this thing's spinning at, at omega, right? So, okay, so, so, so what you understand now is we've, when you've cut it here, is that our axis we actually flips around, right? And that was a bit tricky with MTV that just to get the idea because we need to orientate the blades such that we can understand them uh, and visualize them in a, in a better orientated way. So our x direction is here, and you must always, when you draw velocity triangles, you must always show what your x and what your y slash theta direction is. So you can either call this y your circumferential direction, or you can call it theta. It's really up to you. But as a as general practice, uh, we, we would like to call it theta, right? Because that's the direction of uh, of the of the blades, right? That's ultimately what you want. We want these. We want the, the blades are the most important factor in all of this, and that's why we care about it, right? So now we know that okay, this is our x direction. So this is basically the direction of of flow. This is the direction. This is uh, what's basically this is our axial flow direction. This is this axis here, and this is our our fluid which is flowing. Our fluid is flowing this way. Right? So it's, okay, so our fluid is flowing this way. Okay, so uh, our, our fluid basically has an absolute velocity, right? It's flowing in this direction, in the x direction, because we want to know how much of this axial flow is being converted into mechanical energy. And uh, so this is the absolute velocity, it's known as Cx, right? Uh, as, yeah, so it's known as Cx. So just take note, and we assume it to be constant throughout because we have. We're basically known as we have state one, we have uh, state two here, this, and then we have state three, right? But for the for the basics, because obviously you first start with the basics uh, with MTV, we only generally work with the rotor, right? The data we leave out for now, but you will get to a point where all three stages will be factored in. Right, but we just yeah you know, we're doing a general representation of uh, of this velocity triangle. Okay, so uh, let's quickly get a color. Yeah. Okay. So so what's going on here is so your stator right your stator has it's not moving right and you would agree with me if we look at our image right if you if you look at our image let me, let me just zoom out a bit. Okay. If, if we look at our image here, right, this, so this uh, CX, so this is basically, let me just quickly add that. So this is our absolute velocity of CX. This is CX. Okay, and we assume it to be constant throughout the stages. So CX equals to CX1, right, uh, CX2. This is CX2. Uh, we have CX3. Um, yeah, essentially. 
which is basically the CX of each stage. Like this is just a general assumption, right? Uh, okay. So, okay. So what's going on here is this CX is now flowing onto the stator, right? And the stator is not moving, so it's capturing some of this fluid. Not all of it, but some of it. And some of the fluid that's been captured, this is this is known as W1. No, no, sorry. This is C1. So it's basically known as C1. So this is our absolute velocity. This is what's going on to the stator, right? And the stator is at uh, is at an angle. Uh, so so this is known as the absolute flow at, at C1 absolute flow because it's not moving. There's just one flow going in, right? So this is going to be okay. This is going to be at alpha one, right? This is basically it. And then obviously, in our specific case here is we, we oh no 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 sorry it's not right should draw that I'll explain now why but we'll have our C X here right C X is here so that's the flow that's coming in and our our, uh, our alpha one is this angle here so this is alpha one so this is our absolute flow angle. Right, absolute flow angle. So it's always from the CX direction. Our blade angles are always from the X di CX direction because you want to know how much of this flow is actually going on to the stator, or in, I mean, you'll see just now also on the rotor. Okay, so that's how. This is just all you have to do for the for the stator. All right. Uh, as a rule of thumb, to draw your your uh, your velocity triangles, you just have to follow the shape of the just follow the shape of the blade. Okay, so you just memorize the shape and then you essentially draw it. Okay, so now what we do is is we draw. Uh, we we now look at the rotor, which is the most important part of of this, like the velocity triangles. And yeah, let's quickly see here. So okay, so what's going on here is because the blade's moving, right? You guys agree with me? The blade's moving, and if something's moving. It means that the some of the fluid that is flowing now onto you, because remember this thing is moving, some of the fluid that is flowing onto you, because uh, the, the fluid has its own speed, right? Because it's got the CX, it's moving, but the the rotor is also moving, uh, which which means that it has, uh, it, it means that this uh, this blade has given the fluid some extra energy, right, to, to move because it's moving. And there's also the the energy coming on to the blade. So what we do is is we draw what's known as our relative velocity. And you just follow the shape. It's, this is our relative flow velocity, W1. And then we just follow the shape. And we have W2. Uh, W2. All right. W2. Okay. So that's W1, and that's W2. And then the size of the vectors, remember what, uh, I feel like this should actually be longer. Excuse this, this should be longer than this one if, if we're looking at the dimension. Because remember, like we, we do need to understand what's actually going on here. This should be a little bit shorter. To make this W2, you can actually, wait, sorry, let's make this, uh, Let's actually, for now, this should be W3, right? This should be W3 because you're at the third stage, right? And this should be W2 because we're at the second stage here. Yeah. So just to take note of that, all right? Remember what's, oh, sorry guys, I just want to be, I want to be 100% correct so that if you guys are 100% the correct information. So this should be a little bit shorter than W2. Two. The reason being is, remember that, so some of this fluid is coming onto the blade and then the energy, the velocity of the relative velocity of the fluid is going to decrease because it's absorbing, the blade is absorbing some of this energy to move. So that means this relative velocity that's coming on here is, it's, yeah, the energy is going to, yeah, it's essentially going to, uh, it's going to take some energy away. Okay. So that's, that's pretty much our relative velocities. Right, and the relative velocities, uh, they are at an angle. Our relative velocities are at an angle. I don't know. Uh, so let's quickly draw this thing here. So we have CX here. So we have CX here. 
FCX. All right. Uh, let me let's quickly let's just quickly delete this thing here because in the way. Okay, so we have CX. All right, so CX is here. I'll just excuse another line's not straight. Okay, we have CX there. And we have W2 here. And W2 is at a flow angle. Uh, this is at a relative flow angle. Let's draw now. Let's take this brown. So it's at a relative flow angle of beta. All right, it's at a relative flow angle of beta 2. All right, and then we have a, yeah, we have the same thing for this one here at the bottom. All right, so the same one at the bottom here, which is CX. So then it's CX. CX. Yeah. Generally, yes, you would have CX2, CX3, CX1, but they, they're all the same, right? So you don't really have to uh, draw them. Okay, wait, let's make this a CX here. Okay. And then this is at, a, at an angle of, uh, of beta 3. All right. So this is at an angle of beta 3. Right, so, so this is our relative velocities. Now, what we need to look at, we need to look at, uh, at, at our, we also need to consider our blade velocities, right? We, we need to, yeah, we, we, we need to consider the, the blade velocity. So if we look at our, our question here, you'll see that, that we, we have our blade, so we have our relative velocities as you see here, right? So we can even just, in here we have our let's quickly see here we have our relative velocities here and then we also need to consider our absolute velocities All right so our, our blade speed velocities so what we do here is let's quickly get another color make this red so we got our u here that we have u generally actually just from a size point of view u should be smaller than is going to be smaller than both of them. The reason being is the blade, think about it, right? The blade always, the, the, the blade should move sm slower than the fluid or else, or else it won't move faster, right? Like if the blade is moving faster than the fluids, then it means that it won't, there won't be any more energy from the fluid to make it go faster, right? So generally your, your blades, Right, we're going to be, let's make this U here, All right, wait, let me, let's, let's just make this, uh, let's, okay, let, let's just zoom in a bit, zoom in, okay, zoom in again, okay, because I just want us to look at this diagram, okay, so we have our U, Right, and then what we need to do is, is we need to have our absolute velocities because remember the relative velocity and absolute velocity are combining to form our uh, our absolute velocity. So this is the fluid. Remember, this is the velocity of the fluid, guys. U is the velocity of the blade. W and C is the velocity of the fluid. Okay, so we have C here. Right, we have C. It's actually let me let's just delete let's just delete this for now it's kind of in the way all right well, let's delete these you get the idea and then we'll delete this you get the idea okay so then we have c2 right over here this is the absolute velocity right and our C, so where you draw your CX, it's always about where do these two, where does W and C, where do they start? They start there, which means you draw C, uh, blue, no, let's make it blue. Where does it start? And it's going to be the same for compressors. You draw it there, this will be CX, all right? And yeah, and then we're going to have, uh, okay, we'll, we'll do the next one now, okay? And then we'll have our C2 here. So our C2, we draw it like this. Remember, this is specifically for the turbine. This will be our C2. This will be C2. No, C3. Apologies. This will be C3. And 
then we just need to have our cx we need to add our cx values right so it's always about where it starts let's change the color to blue so cx is here all right cx is here and uh, yeah so so how we know that we should draw it in this orientation for turbine blades and a way you can remember it is that over here C is always going to be, or C2 is always going to be above W2, right? It's always going to be the case. The reason being is your absolute velocity is always going to be above red because the, flu the fluid's coming in very fast, right? Uh, this is like, yeah, the fluid's coming in faster. So C2 is always going to be above this. And then coming out, C3 is going to be a below W3. It's just a just a rule of thumb because now a lot of this absolute flow energy has been converted, right? It's, 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 it's been converted so in, into motion, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so then what we do is we just add our blade angles, right? So let me so add all our blade angles, just this so that it's proper. So remember, the blade angles are from the CX direction. So our blade angles, we add our blade angles. So our first blade angle is going to be this absolute flow angle, which is alpha 2. All right, and then we're going to have the same here for alpha 3. Right, alpha 3. Okay. And then we do, uh, let's quickly get another color, make it pink. And then we have what's known as our relative flow angles. Right, so remember these angles here are blade angles. Right, so these are blade angles. Uh, so, oh no, that should be the two. All right, two. And then we just draw the last one, which is here. And then we get this will be beta three. Yeah, and that's that's basically how we draw velocity triangles for the uh, for axial flow turbine, and it's always going to be in this fashion, unless it's stated that it comes in here at a uh, at an axial flow direction, but don't, don't worry too much about that. We'll look at a question and it will, it will make sense. Okay, but this is just the general format, right? And what we do now with these velocity triangles, why we care about them, we use these blade angles to derive equations, right? And the equations, so yeah, so you see here, this is what I wrote here. So the equations are all here. I've given the equations to you as all the equations that we that we use. All right, we use basically we use the components of these uh, of these vectors. So this so obviously here like here's our like so just just to give you an example quickly of what we're actually looking at. So here this in this direction here, right? We'll have I'll see theta 2, right? And then this one here, going in this direction, will be C theta 3. Can you see they're going in the opposite direction? So this one will be negative, right? And it's the same for all of them. Then you have your, at the top here, you have, going down here, you have C uh, x, or oh yeah, C x 2, right? And then over here you have CX1, which obviously is the same as it's the same thing, All right? And it's in, you can apply the same thing to the relative flow angles. Okay, guys, I think I've gone off. Okay. Okay. So these are the general equations we're going to derive from uh, from our velocity triangles, right? So I'm not going to go through the derivation process, right? You can go derive this them yourself. It just comes down to SWK one two two type vector uh, like vectors, right? So if we look now at the, at the notes, these are the general equations we're going to come up with to, yeah, to answer the questions, right? And you remember that there's also assumptions. 
So assumptions are that the turbine's adiabatic, right? Adiabatic implies that Q equals there's no heat loss. Q equals to zero. So there's no there's no heat loss. No heat loss. Oops. No heat loss. Right? It's, and it's, it's isentropic. Uh, it's steady state. Uh, that's one of the things. So that means that the fluid is flowing steady, right? I think we all know that. Uh, 2D flow, so it's an, also going in one direction. We've got mean radius analysis. Uh, it's an ideal gas, and that this is pretty much what you're saying. But note for steam, steam is not an ideal gas, so we can't list that as an assumption. Okay. And then these are all our different equations that's going on here. Right, so you see, you got these x like these are also very important questions because generally you want to they want to know what the mass flow rate is, and then you have uh, your density a x c x, and they want to know now uh, all your uh, yeah they, they they essentially want you to find what the mass flow rate is and use this formula a x right a x so r t is our blade tip radius how uh, what our blade tip radius is. If I just scroll up here so you can understand. So our yeah, so essentially so we, we have our blade height, right? We have our blade height. Have our blade height. How high the blade is, right? But our blade tip radius is from the center. How high is the blade tip? So that's R T. And believe it or not, we have R H, which so this is our center there. We have RH, RH, which is which is our holder height, blade holder height. That H stands for holder. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's briefly look at our equations again. Okay. Then, if you want to determine the power of the turbine, it's to be mass flow rate times the specific work. And generally, this is going to be this is for your rotor, right? This is for your rotor. Back. So your rotor, and then let's go back here. Yes, for your rotor, and then if you want to determine what your rotor work is, so your specific rotor work, right? It's going to equals to. So if you do energy conservation, right, uh, you'll get H. So this you use the stagnation enthalpy. H01 minus H02, and then you're going to get this as your answer, or you, you can think the workings in the textbook if you want to go see it. And then this is pretty much how you find C theta1, use this formula, C theta2, you can find it. In other ways, you can use this formula as well, CX2. So remember, I'm giving you all the equations, and CX1 is equal to this formula. But they note if they tell you the absolute inlet velocity is axial, then it implies that. Uh, this is pretty much all the cases here, and there's one thing I left out, and that, uh, let's see, sorry, I just want to get this alpha value, so, okay, alpha is equal to zero, so just, just take note of that, and yeah, then we've got these equations here, and um, that, that's 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 basically like just our breakdown of axial flow turbines. Let's let's now jump into a question. Okay, but before I do that, is there any questions regarding? Let's quickly see. Uh, where did I have that added here? Do you guys have any questions about what I did here with glassy triangles? Uh, how that works? Uh, is there any questions? Let's continue then. Okay, so if you look here in the notes, I've set a question for us to take a look at. All right, so we'll take a look at this question, and then there's a question after this uh, I want us to look at. I haven't added it here, and it's actually still added. But yeah, let's quickly look at this question. So this is from semester test 1 2019. So I think this was last year's semester test. All right. And what we're going to do now is we'll open, let's open this, and let's add, let's add one of those PDFs, and then we can actually just look at that question together. So we got MTV 420, past papers, where is it? Assignments, exams. 
That's the test one. 2019. Okay, let's quickly add it. Okay, so okay, let's quickly see here. Let's uh, give me one second. This thing. Okay, go as number three. Let's see. No, number two. There we go. Okay, so. We look at this, yeah, we're looking at the specific question here and uh, zoom out. Okay, so now uh, this is a standard question, question you can expect from MT from a SMS test, I imagine, in this class test. Uh, and this is essentially an axial flow turbine. So they say to us an axial flow turbine, an axial flow hydraulic turbine, impeller, impeller means rotor, so take note of that. Impeller. This is a rotor. All right, there's a rotor. It's a rotor. Okay. Uh, is rotating at uh, is rotating at 100 revolutions per minute. So RPM. Generally, we call this uh, make capital mega. The absolute flow velocity at inlet. So we've got absolute flow velocity. You know, absolute flow velocity. This is C1 at inlet. Is in the axial direction. So they basically sell us C1 equals to Cx. That's what they say to us. That's what that means is, uh, is in the flow direction. So it's equal to Cx1, which equals to Cx. They say that to us, right? They've kind of changed the orientation of the, uh, like, it's basically that's the only thing they can change. They just tell you if it's, if the inlet or outlet is going in the axial direction. All right, then the velocity triangles, you'll see they're not going to change like so much. It's actually much easier to draw. Uh, yeah, so at inlet is the actual direction. The axial component of velocity is in the same at inlet and exit of the rotor. So basically, they're saying Cx1, this is what they're saying there, is equal to Cx2. That's what they're telling us. Okay. So equal to CX2. Uh, they tell us, they give us the mean radius. They say the density of the water is this. And now they first say list three assumptions. Okay. So the assumptions in the specific case, uh, let's quickly let's type them out. All right. What are our assumptions? Right. Remember the assumptions? Okay. Because now we, you're not dealing with a, you're dealing with it's an hydraulic turbine. And hydraulic means? Uh, it's water, you're dealing with a liquid, right? So that means it's not an ideal gas. But what we can do is, is we can, we can set our assumptions. So assumptions, so assumptions, all right, and it's pretty much always steady state, steady state, adiabatic turbine, adiabatic turbine, uh, 2D flow, uh, Mean radius analysis. Analysis, right? Analysis. That's pretty much it. Now, if we go look at our at our memo, let's quickly see what he says. Goes number eight or number nine. If we move this, yeah, this was question one, right? Yeah. So if you look here. You'll see steady state, erect turbine, 2D flow, flow direction, uniform between rotors. This is kind of unnecessary one. Water properties are constant. All analysis. Are, you just want three. So that's why you get three marks. So just list the three I gave. All right. Uh, okay, so let's quickly move this. This here. Okay, so we're looking at number, it's number two, yeah. Okay, now they say to us, draw the velocity triangles. Uh, show the vector directions and angles and inlets and exit of the rotors. Obviously, you can expect you're going to get a velocity triangle question tomorrow in your semester, guaranteed, because he loves the velocity triangles. Uh, even last year, he always used to have a surprise class test on velocity triangles. Okay, so let's quickly draw the velocity triangles. Right, so our velocity triangles. Just delete this. Our, our velocity triangles. Okay, so, so remember, we're only dealing with the rotor, right? They say the rotor, so we don't have to worry about the state or any of that. 
It's basic now. Only focus on the rotor. All right, and how I like to remember it is uh, just is our let me just confirm. Uh, okay, no, I don't think that's right. I think I drew that. It's not okay. So it's a bit longer. Just draw it as he has it. Uh, but here is his orient. Can you see the orientation is the other way around? You don't really have to. You can do your own orientations really up to as long as you specify the the axis direction. So this is pretty much what we get. All right, this is pretty much it. And uh, we need to specify our axis. Our axis. This is going to be our theta direction, and then this is going to be our axial direction, which is x. All right. And then all we do is is to draw the bay velocities. We just to start off, just remember, just like, okay, we remember that uh, C over here is going to be above W. One. You don't have to write this down. It's just you don't have to write it on the like for the question. Just as a just to remember, this should be in your head. Uh, one and then C two is below W two. And trust me, this you'll see now. While I'm writing this down. This is what makes it very. Let me just let's make some space. Okay, write that better. So we have C two. Just remember this. Just write it in the start so you can remember it. Okay, but the first thing what we're going to do is is we're going to draw our relative. So you just follow the just follow the shape of the blade. That's pretty much it. Just follow the shape of the blade. All right, just follow, and the, you're always going to have a relative flow angle. Right, there you go. So just follow the shape of the blade. So this will be W1. And then just then we have W2. W2. Alright. Alright, so W2. Now remember they said to us that the absolute velocity at inlet is, is in the CX direction. This implies that alpha 1 is equal to 0. Right, because it's in the, there's no component for it, and you'll see now why. And C theta. One is equal to zero as well. So just take note of that. All right now, let's draw our uh, our absolute velocities. All right. So generally, draw your velocity vectors first, and then and then draw your uh, your your angles. So so draw the vectors first, and then do the angles. Okay. So we need to add u as well. All right. We need to add u. This is very important. And then we add u here. All right, we have u over there. All right, we always we always have our u. All right, uh, and then we have our u here. We have our u here. Let me just I think I just drew it wrong, incorrect. Draw it here. All right, but they 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 did say to us that. This this is in the in the axial direction, right? And because it's in the axial direction, right? Because it's in the axial direction, we're not gonna. Sorry, guys. Okay, so uh, let's quickly see. Okay, so it's, because it's in the axial direction, we're going to let's draw the axial velocity there. So this will be our c1 or our cx. So c1, which is equal to cx. And how you draw it, why you know to draw it there is because you they must always start at the same w, it always joins, it always starts at the same point. Pretty much how you know. That's equal to cx. Alright, it's the same thing. And then what we can do is, is we can then just complete it and add and add u to the mix. Add u. And then what we do is, is we just add our uh yeah, let this also use there. Alright. I think I could so I think I can just draw this in a different color. Okay, let's draw this in purple. Because I've used purple. Okay, this is that. Alright. And then our blade, our blade angles. Uh oh wait, no, our, and then our absolute flow angle coming out. 
uh, this is going to be like it doesn't change because they said to us that uh, you know they, they essentially said to us that it's uh, just the inlet that's axial, right? And the reason why, the, yeah, the okay. Well, I guess in this case this is not true. I guess this is not true in this specific case because it's axial, right? Okay, above here, but always coming out. C2 is, is, is always going to be less than W2. It's just a, a rule of thumb unless they otherwise. So axial, if something axial does change the question a bit, right? But if it's, you remember these things for the general case. Okay, so let's quickly add our blade angles. So our blade angles, our first, okay, so we got, so in this case, alpha one zero is not there. All right, but, but we have beta, which is always coming from the x direction. So this is beta 1. We draw beta 1. All right. Then we can, and then we also need to add cx here. All right. We'll add cx here. So cx, we must always add cx. cx is here. All right. Uh, let's see, I left it in right c2. That should be c2 there. And then, yeah, let's just quickly add our velocity vectors. So use always between C and C2, or between W and C. So just take note of that. It's always between them. Okay. And then CX can be by itself, just chilling. Okay, so let's quickly get the next blade angle. The next blade, oh yeah, so the, we got beta 2 here. Uh, beta 2, right, and then our next one, we can just add our next one, which is here, and this will be our alpha 2, which is our absolute flow angle. And then, yeah, that's that's pretty much our velocity triangles, right, so just for axial, it's actually easier to deal with, and then that's pretty much that. Okay, so let's quickly look at the memo. Right, if we look at the memo, let's move this. So that the memo, yes, he drew it in a different orientation, but if you reverse it as how we have it, you'll see that's what he's added. I see that he also adds the C theta component, right? And he lists, he tells this, so add this to the diagram. So let's add this, and then just always add your, your theta components. Okay, so our, our theta component, Right, we can actually just quickly draw it. Our theta component, which would be here. Uh, let's quickly. Okay, theta component, and then just draw the pen. Our theta component always, this is our theta, C theta, T theta 2. And then over here, we just essentially just always say alpha 1 equals to 0. And we say theta 1 equals to 0. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we've, we've got our velocity triangles done. We've got our assumptions done. That's pretty much that. Now they say to us, find the mass flow rate of, uh, of the fluid, right? And they give us dimensions for this. Okay. So if they want you to find mass flow rate, there's different ways you can do it. All right, so to so to find mass flow rate, there's, there's there's different ways you can do it, but the first way you always start with is finding m c x, right? Like or well, density of the fluid times its cross sectional area times c times c x axial velocity. This is just a general equation, right? Another way, just take note of this. Sometimes what you can do is an, another way that you can find it is he could give you the road like he could give you the power of the turbine then you must find the rotor work and then you must obviously just divide and then you get m that's another way that you can hack it okay sometimes you, you can't find cax or or sometimes it, it gets so long and crazy that you the only way you can find cx is by finding the mass flow rate all right because of this formula and then what you need to do is is you need to then find the work, right? The rotor work of the turbine, and then divide to get the mass flow rates, 
and then find six. Like it's some MTV is crazy because you're just using equations everywhere and it gets more and more difficult over time. But for now, let's start with this equation here. We just start with that. All right, so let's quickly, let's see, are we doing this equation? Are we doing this question? So let me, let me, let me do it this, or let's zoom out a bit. All right, so we got the, okay, wait, let me, okay, so, okay, so now the, the next thing is they want us to determine the mass flow rate. All right, so our mass flow rate, uh, our mass flow rate, so let's, let's get the drawing tool. So our mass flow rate, all right, our mass flow rate is equals to the density times AX, all right, times CX. Now, do we know what CX is? Okay, so now it just comes down to listing knowns and unknowns. All right, mass flow rate. Okay, density, what is that? Do they give us, they give us density, yes, of the water. So this should be density of water. All right, because that's what they gave to us there. Uh, AX, we, we don't know what that is. No, so we need to know what, we need to find this. Do you know what CX is? No, we don't even know what we need to find that. Okay, so our AX, right, our AX, the first things first is let's find AX. All right, AX, 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 which is our cross-sectional flow area. It's this area of flow through the turbine. So you see how we have this turbine here, with all this fluid flowing. It's just that cross-sectional area that's flowing through the turbine blades. Okay, so we have done that. Two. Okay, so AX, we go to our formula sheet. That's why it's always good to have your formula sheet on hand and ready. We'll see that here's our formula here. Uh, let me copy this. Oh, yeah, it's pi. So generally, there's two formulas you can use. You can, they give you different answers. The reason being is this one uses a mean radius height, and mean radius is a general height. It's not a, an exact height. It's not like half the height or something. It's just a general given height. Uh, so the answer will be a bit different, but it's still accepted. Okay. But generally, you always want to go for this one. This is like the main, the main one. Okay. Yeah, this, this is the main one. Okay. So we get, uh, so it's going to be a is going to equal to, going to equal to pi. Let's actually let's put the let's have our here, and then. Have our word document there. Sorry, just give me one second, just to move it. All right, so then we can just so we have we can look at our equations. All right, and then we can look at our we can look at both of them. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay, and then we can. Okay, so let's quickly move it. All right. Uh, or let's see if this here. What we can probably do is anyway, let me zoom out. Zoom out. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we're doing is is okay. What 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 we're doing is is we look. Uh, yes. Okay, so what we what we're doing is is we looking for uh, we're looking for AX, right? And in order to find AX, we just look at our formula sheet and you see we have this formula here, and that's going to equals to pi pi uh, pi times R T R wait what happening R T oh wait pi okay that's sorry. So that's going to equal to pi RT squared. Now that's our blade tip height, right? RT squared is our blade tip height. I even told you here. And then minus RH, which is our shaft height, R squared. You can also call it RS. Another way they've call it, they call it RS here. So let's delete this and call it RS. 
but generally he calls it RH. But in this case, he called it RS. All right. And then if you we 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 know what uh, we we know what RT is because they give it to us as here. Right. But obviously, all of these need to be in meters. This needs to all be in meters. And then we know what this is. We know what this is because they give us the, the shaft height there. And then pi, and then we get our answer. Let's quickly check what our answer is. Uh, let me just quickly check what our answer is. I'll, I'll tell you now. Uh, so if we look at our answer, look at somewhere here. Our answer is here. If we look at our answer, let's move this. If we look at our answer, our answer is here. You see how they did it. It's equals to 0 0.076 meters squared. All right. So it's going to equal to 0 point, uh, 0 0.0, 0.0, 0.0706. And now you've got easy mark. Remember, this was a semester test, guys. And a lot of people failed the semester test last year. It was hectic. I think the pass rate was uh, 20... No, it was 12% or something. The average was 28%. So anyway, so 0 0.06 meters squared. All right, we got that. Okay. Now the next thing is we need to determine what uh, what CX. Is. So we so we found our uh, we found AX. All right now we just need to determine what CX is equal to. Uh, so let's quickly get our pen. So Cx, we need to know what Cx is, right? And there's different equations that we can use to determine what Cx is. Uh, yeah. So Cx, because now basically what you can do is that you can just look at your, because it's absolute inlet velocity is axial. So if the absolute inlet velocity is axial, then we get this condition here. So we use these, these are some equations for it. Some of these equations still hold, like this equation still holds, but this is just at the inlet. Right, so CX, CX is going to equal to U over tan beta 1. This is just the general formula, tan beta 1. Right, they give us, uh, they give us tan beta 1 here, as you see. Right, so I think it's also a good idea what you can do is, in your velocity diagram, also because you use this thing, this thing is like to see what you have, what you don't have. Write your write beta one. Wait, let's get rid of this. Write beta one. Uh, let's quickly get it. So a different color. Say beta one. Wait, what different color? I want brown. Okay, say say beta one. Just write it down. It's another important rule of thumb. Write down the, all the knowns and unknowns. So 15 degrees, right? Beta 2 in this case is equal to 65 degrees. All right? And then alpha 2 is not, we need to find it. We need, because blade, this, this, uh, like, MTV just comes down to blade angle. So it's really that. Okay, so blade angles are very, very important. Okay, so U, we need to find what U is. Do you know what U is? No, we don't. We know what U is. Uh, we, we know what that is. So now, how do we find U? And, and this is basically how you solve MTV questions, like any other engineering module. You list your equations, and then you just solve it step by step. But the difference with MTV is that it's like EBN. You have to be able to know the solution as you read the question. Like you shouldn't even think about the solution. It should be instant. You should just know, I need to do this, 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 and this because of time. There's no time in MTV. And the only way you can know that is to do as many past paper questions as possible. You need to do like everything. I'm not even playing it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you, let's see you. We need to find what you is. And I have a formula here for you. U is equals to alpha, like if we look here, it's equal to alpha. And you just need to write this all down on your formula sheet. 2 pi, right, it's equal to 2 pi 60, 60, and then times the mean radius, right? Now, 
this is in RPM, right? That's why we have 2 pi times 60. If they give it to you, take note. If, if they give it to you as a, so, so this is this is for RPM, right? This is for RPM. Sometimes they'll give it to you in revs per second. If they give it to you, if they give it to you as uh, RPS, revs per second, right? So this is just the little note. Then you can imagine then it will be u will equal to 2 pi times rm. Okay, so let's just take note of that. This is for RPS and this is for RPM. But obviously we're dealing with with, uh, with RPM. This is just a, a note. Just a note. Okay, so we doing we dealing with this one. All right, we we know what that is because they give it to us as 1,800 revs per minute. They give us RM over. They tell us RM 0.11. I suppose on your velocity diagram you can also write RM down. Write RM down. Just write down all your knowns. You have to write down all your knowns and unknowns before you start uh, with MTV. Because remember, this is just a map, so you know what it makes life easy with equations. Trust me, that's why we draw it. Okay, so okay, guys, I disconnected.